Today's video is all about division word problems. I will explain how we can use the cube strategy as well as the problem solving think sheet to help guide students along in determining when to use division to solve word problems. This video is part of a problem solving series, so be sure to check out these videos for more information regarding the resources that will be used in this video and links can be found down below in the description box. In order for students to accurately determine when division is needed to solve word problems, they must become familiar with the situations involved as well as the actions that are taking place. Some of those actions include whether objects are being shared or separated into equal groups, are objects being split or cut into equal amount or size pieces, or is an equal amount of something being distributed over a period of time. Becoming familiar with these signal or keywords are useful too. However, students should not solely rely upon them because keywords such as each and equal groups can also be found when solving multiplication word problems as well. Overall, students must have a good understanding of the context of what's happening in the word problem, being able to recognize when objects are being combined and separated, and that with division more specifically, a total is already given and either the total number of groups or the number in each group needs to be determined. Now let's consider how we can apply this understanding by solving a few word problems. This one reads, Alex bought 12 bagels. He put four bagels in each bag. How many bags of bagels are there? Remember to always encourage students to read each problem at least twice and to stop and reflect on what's taking place or in other words, to think about the situation. After the second reading, students should have a good sense of what's happening in the word problem and to begin using the cube strategy to fill in the think sheet. The C reminds students to circle the key numbers needed to solve the problem. And since Alex took the 12 bagels and put four bagels in each bag, we can record that information right in this section. The next step in the cube strategy has us to identify the question by underlining it. And the question can be written right here in the U section. Next, we must box the action words that describe whether something is being combined or separated. And although put is not one of your traditional math action words, it does describe in action what Alex did with the bagels. He put four in each bag. And the signal word each lets us know that something is being grouped. E is where students need to take time to reflect on what has taken place in the word problem. And since the 12 bagels were separated, being that they were put four into each bag, we can reason that division will be needed to solve this word problem because we're given the total and we were also given the number in each group. We just need to find out how many groups are there. Or in other words, how many bags are there? In the Show Your Workspace, students should use this area to draw a picture and or equation. This is a great opportunity for students to explain their thinking. In this section, also encourage students to develop the habit of labeling their numbers to describe what each number means. This serves as good practice when students respond to extended response questions on standardized tests too. In this last section, students will use this space to answer the question by writing it in a complete sentence here. Let's try this next example. It reads, there are 20 students in Mrs. Clark's class. The students were put into five equal groups. How many students are in each group? Let's assume that we've already circled the key information as well as identified the question by underlining it. Now, giving close attention to the B and E sections, students must box the action words that are involved. As we can see, the students were put into five equal groups. Those signal words are important because it helps us to see that the 20 students were separated and being that they were separated into equal groups, that lets us know that division will be needed to solve for this problem. Once again, help students to recognize that since the total was given and we already know the number of groups, and since we need to find out how many in each group, then division is the appropriate operation to use. And here we can see an example of how students can completely show their work, making sure to include an equation and or picture, labeling each part so that it is clear to the reader that they understand the problem. And once the problem is solved, it's important that they then 
write their answer in a complete statement. Here are a few things to remember when it comes to identifying division word problems. One criteria is that the problem will describe that a total amount of something is being separated. As noted in both examples, we did not need to solve for the total, rather the total amount was already given. Another point to keep in mind when it comes to division word problems is that equal groups are involved. Either the number in each group is given, as we see in the first example, and we need to find the number of groups, or the number of groups is given and we need to find the number in each group, as we see in the second example. Keep in mind that with repeated practice and explicit instruction on teaching students these important points, you'll notice that over time it'll all start coming together for your students. And be sure to be on the lookout for my next video as I explore how to help students distinguish between multiplication and division word problems. And as always, thank you for watching. And to continue to support my channel, feel free to share with your colleagues and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, take care.